Welcome to the Hyper Polygot Activist, Learn Languages Make a Difference. My name is Dr. Carlos Gebra Lopez and I'm here today in Zamboanga, Philippines, joined by Professor Dr. Claribel Concepcion. Welcome. Thank you so much for making us part of this uh, project that you're doing. So we're very glad that you're here. So we hope um, we could be of help in whatever project you're doing. Thank you so much. You've been all very welcoming, very <laughs> hospitable, so I'm very grateful for it. Yes, yes. And so the first question I wanted to ask you is, how did you learn Chabacano and about Chabacano, and what is your professional link to the language? Okay, uh, I'm a pure Chabacana. My parents, uh, who are both dead, spoke the language. Mm -hmm. Their parents also were Chabacano speakers. And uh, you know that's how we learned the language. All around us, the neighbors that we had all spoke in Chabacano. So, but right now I'm in a different area, so we have neighbors who speak uh, other languages. Uh, Chabacano is very close to my heart because, for one, that's the dissertation that I worked on. The first question that I was thrown when I defended my dissertation was. Uh, what's the difference between the Chabacano with a B as in boy and the Chabacano with a V as in victory? Mm -hmm. And so I explained to them that uh, in the way that the phonology works, it's with a B. Uh, but based on the many documents made available to us, it's spelled with a V. But I've also learned uh, based on my readings of how uh, the Spanish-speaking people speak the Spanish language, which is, by the way, the donor language of Chabacano, the main lexifier. They don't distinguish between the B is in boy and B is in victory, and that's the same mm -hmm. thing here. But it's not for everyone because um, other people who are uh, aware of the alphabet, who are very familiar with the English alphabet, I must say, to be more specific, uh, they know that the B as in boy and B as in victory are different phonemes, and so they distinguish this very well. And this knowledge of theirs is carried over to Chabacano. Mm -hmm. So even if they are speaking in Chabacano, many of them still distinguish the two. But for those people who are speaking so spontaneously, they are not on their guards as to whether you know they should be distinguishing the two phonemes or not. Uh, they just go on pronouncing the B as in, uh, you know, the, the Chabacano with a B. Mm -hmm. uh, there are more speakers who are not so conscious of how they should be distinguishing these two phonemes uh, mm -hmm. who are doing it with a B. And I think that's being natural. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chabacano is uh, special to me in uh, other respects because... Uh, 
I've been made to work on Chabacano, like for example, the English, dic uh, I mean the Chabacano Dictionary, which mm -hmm. I was made to head as uh, the project manager. And I was also asked to be one of the editors. Uh, the writer is Dr. Rolando Santos, one of our alumni in uh, Ateneo de Zamboanga mm -hmm. University. And uh, from time to time, I'm asked to give uh, thoughts about the Chabacano language. We've also been involved in this uh, multilingual project with uh, the Universidad de Malaga and other European universities and Philippine law universities. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are forwarding the idea of not just multilingualism but plurilingualism. I mm -hmm. think that's the more popular term in uh, Europe. And so we've been doing work on Chabacano, like the dean as well. He, he has done work on uh, linguistic landscape, uh, trying mm -hmm. to show to people how multilingualism works. And my dissertation is also mm -hmm. on bilingualism, multilingualism. And we're so concerned about the loss of uh, many speakers mm -hmm. of the Chabacano language. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a bone of contention for some people because others believe that as media keep on getting more active, uh, Chabacano is more utilized. Like we've noticed the uh, different radio channels right now mm -hmm. do their nose casting on Facebook and that's a way of spreading the language. Uh, and you know they're doing it with other means but uh, we have noticed that so many uh, couples no longer speak the Chabacano language with the, your children and being in applied linguistics we are aware that uh, when a language loses a lot of children speakers who by the way are the carriers of the language to the next generations pretty sure the language will get lost. That's why we in the department and those students uh, who have uh, been taking their subjects with us in the PhD in LS, we've been discussing how we can uh, revitalize mm -hmm. the Chabacano language mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. more, meaning mm -hmm. how we can intensify our efforts. Mm -hmm. And not just the Chabacano language, it's also other languages, but because um, Chabacano is really spoken in Sambonga City, which is my birthplace, mm -hmm. uh, we sometimes get to pay more attention to this language. And we've always said that if we don't, um, it might be like the many languages that have uh, been lost, like, you know, in the United States, uh, because so many uh, uh, groups, uh, ethnicities have lost their languages, mm -hmm. you know. So much knowledge has also been lost. When a group of people loses a language, mm -hmm. it's like losing a huge library because mm -hmm. uh, the language is, you know, mm -hmm. the one that carries all the knowledge. And losing the language also means losing the identity. Mm -hmm. So it's so people tell to us that we intensify our efforts uh, in the revitalization of the language. Mm -hmm. We cannot wait for other people from mm -hmm. other nations mm -hmm. or other organizations to come. You know, we should be heading the efforts because it is our language. We care so much about it and we care for the city. So mm -hmm. uh, we are, uh, you know, more and more discussing how best we can mm -hmm. document the language. Mm -hmm. And Claybel, in that sense, thank you very much for this introduction. I have a few questions. So the first one was concerning the glottonym, the language name of Chabacano, right? You mentioned the um, phonetic argument as to the B and the V. C. And there is also the ideological argument, right? The fact that, as I explained yesterday, in the Rias Dictionary, Chabacano with a B for Barcelona is equated to vulgar, mm. whereas Chabacano with a V for victory doesn't exist. Does that also play a role when choosing how to spell the language yeah. and, and which which argument is more weighty in your opinion the the phonetic one or the ideological one it does play uh, uh, something to the whole argument about whether uh, it should be spelled with a b and even pronounced with a b mm -hmm. to people who are aware of the differences but to other mm -hmm. people no it does not play Mm -hmm. Because to them, whether we pronounce the language with a 
be as in boy or be as in victory, it still pertains to the same language. And as I've said, it's uh, being natural if we mm -hmm. pronounce it with a B because uh, to many people, uh, there is really no distinction between the two phonemes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And but do they feel colonial remorse if they spell it with a B because it's equivalent to a negative notion in Spanish, or they don't think about those as associations with Chabacano with V as opposed to Chabacano with V? Uh, it really depends on who you're talking about, because mm -hmm. for people who are aware of the origin, they may opt not to spell it with a B mm -hmm. as in boy, but V as in victory. Right. But to those who are not aware of it, mm -hmm. uh, they may not really mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, great. Yes. And then another aspect you mentioned is that in Europe, Chabacano can be studied under the notion of plurilingualism rather than multilingualism. To my knowledge, the difference between multilingualism and plurilingualism, at least as used in some European Union documents, is that plurilingualism involves democratic citizenship, the use of the language for the purpose of inhabiting a pluralistic society. Yes. Is, that, is that the difference you were making reference to? In yeah, in a way. It also depends on the documents mm -hmm. that we are reading. Mm -hmm. it's, yes. Uh, because, you know, even translanguaging can be a, an appropriate term, you know, right. depending on what knowledge we carry about translanguaging. Mm -hmm. uh, translanguaging has a lot of definitions depending on who we are subscribing to. So if we're subscribing, for example, to Liwe and uh, Ophelia Garcia, they mm -hmm. may have their own definition of what mm -hmm. translanguaging is. Indeed. But to us here, you know, we we live in a linguistic constellation uh, all the na the languages that we speak are good things for us because uh, they form our linguistic repertoire mm -hmm. and they are resources for us to navigate in the day-to-day -day world so you know we meet people our students are multilingual we know that uh, it's it's a blessing it's a boon rather than a bane and therefore it's something that we have to continue developing mm -hmm. yes and when you talk about the need for the uh, Ateneo de Zamboanga to preserve this language through education and to document it mm -hmm. what are the priorities when it comes to preserving Chavacano in the 21st century you talk about documentation what right. kind of documentation uh, is it building a corpus is it documenting audiovisual evidence of the language uh, there are so many ways. So for one, it's building a corpus. We've been talking about it with our graduate students mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, they're the, they're the ones who can also mobilize forces, they mm -hmm. knowing also other students who mm -hmm. speak the language. So the more people who cooperate in the creation of the corpus, the more we can fortify mm -hmm. the corpus, mm -hmm. uh, yes. so. Uh, but we know that we've got to really make it electronic because that's the fastest way that yes. we can, you know, spread the use of the language. And not only that, uh, the electronic storage uh, is also something that we may not have like a limit to when it comes to mm -hmm. space. So we're heading for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, although, like for example, sometimes we hold competitions here, concursos in Chabacano. Ah. Uh, so we initiate like uh, literary competitions where mm -hmm. people can write stories, right. essays, and poems in Chabacano. There are mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. But we've got to do something also about our dictionary because uh, to date, no one has yet written a an unabridged dictionary that really contains mm -hmm. the different words that we have in Chapacano. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of versions, but we know that they are not complete, you know, mm -hmm. they are limited. Mm -hmm. And so just yesterday I was discussing with the dean that yeah, because we released the one dictionary which mm -hmm. was written by our own alumnos, Dr. Rolando Santos, mm -hmm. and we've seen the many things that we can improve on, we have to be, you know, talking again and see what efforts we can put together so that we get to come up with a more unabridged version of the Chabacano Dictionary. Maybe arrange things in semantic domains and then improve the grammar part because mm -hmm. 
um, I, I tell you all, uh, we have a lot of speakers here and what's good is that many speakers are also into linguistics uh, mm -hmm. specialization. But uh, the syntax part is something that is wanting to us. Mm -hmm. So perhaps uh, in making the dictionary, we should also be thinking about the grammar so that we can mm -hmm. also uh, include it in the dictionary. The one that was given to you yesterday already mm -hmm. has the grammar part, but it's very minimal. Right. There are so many things that we can, you know, yeah, it's a write sketch. about yeah. Yeah, when it mm -hmm. comes to syntax. And so. in when it comes to the electronic revitalization of Chavacano, what do you think about the idea or the suggestion to create a chatbot that can interact with people all over the world for free in Chavacano? Is that feasible? Is that desirable? It's very feasible because we've seen uh, that being done already by other companies uh, and they have already included a lot of languages. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chabacano should be in the counting. Chabacano should be taken into full account. Mm -hmm. After all, it's one of the languages. So, uh, I if there's enough funding, why mm -hmm. not? I mean, mm -hmm. if uh, other companies were able to do it for other languages, mm -hmm. uh, definitely it can also be done for the mm -hmm. Chabacano language. Mm -hmm. All we need to do is, uh, you know, to to plan and see, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how best to document this in the mm -hmm. form of a chatbot mm -hmm. uh, because I'm pretty sure there are other people out there outside the country are also interested in the Chabacano language. We've been yes. having visitors uh, coming mm -hmm. over to Sambuanga mm -hmm. and then uh, mm -hmm. expressing their curiosity and mm -hmm. their interest in the Chabacano mm -hmm. language. In fact, the group of Dr. Perea mm -hmm. uh, from Universidad de Malaga mm -hmm. uh, came back here um, asking that we undertake another project in Chapacano, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, funding is something that we also have to think about. Yeah, and we were trying to see where we could uh, fit in mm -hmm. the project using the Erasmus Plus uh, program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it didn't take off, but uh, he's not resting. He said uh, he'll pick it up, but uh, we went ahead with another project, which is called mm -hmm. the Calzada. And that's uh, uh, also equally good because it's reforming the law curricula in the Philippines mm. and you know, trying to almost like standardize it with uh, mm -hmm. the law offering also mm -hmm. in other countries. Great. Yes. Yeah, so. And to, to finish, to top it all off, I would like you to share, please, an expression that you like in Chavacano or that is particularly interesting to you for our audience to, <laughs> to know. See, uh, well, we usually say ketal when we meet people. It's, yeah. uh, it's a way of greeting. Uh, mm -hmm. Or we say, como esta? Mm -hmm. you know? Although that sounds Spanish. Como mm -hmm. esta, by the way, which is a Tagalog term, also comes from Spanish. Mm -hmm. So, como esta, from the Spanish, como estas tu? Mm -hmm. So, there are many <laughs> expressions. You have to ask me so that I can give you the equivalence in uh, Chabacano, like, mm -hmm. donde tu ta queda? Mm -hmm. Si, uh, cosea pa sa contigo? Uh, cosa el progreso na vida? Mm -hmm. So you have to ask me so that I mm -hmm. can see. Great. Well, thank you so much, Claribel, yeah. for your contribution. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope to come back. Thank many you for more the times. interest in our language. Absolutely. You know? It's yes. fascinating. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope that this uh, is of interest to our audience. And if you have any comments, please write them down below. We'll refer them to Claribel and everybody else in Zamboanga. And hopefully that will help further the language in the 21st century. Thank you sí, so much. Yeah, yeah. Gracias, Gallo. Yeah, thank you too.